Hello, I'm Dr. Stephen Lemaski, Chairman of the Diabetes and Endocrine Disease Management Committee at South Nassau Communities Hospital. If you're watching this video, you're probably one of nearly 25 million Americans with diabetes or a friend or family member of one. The numbers are staggering. Based on data from the 2011 National Diabetes Fact Sheet from the American Diabetes Association, 18.8 million people have been diagnosed with diabetes. About 7 million people have been undiagnosed, and nearly 79 million people have pre-diabetes. In fact, 1.9 million new cases of diabetes were diagnosed in people aged 20 and older in 2010. So you're not alone. Diabetes is an important disease that can lead to serious vascular complications. Medically, we divide them into small and large vessel problems known as micro and macrovascular disease. These are the problems that can affect your eyes, kidneys, nerves, and of course can lead to heart attacks, strokes, and amputations. By learning about diabetes and managing it properly, you can limit or prevent these complications. In this video, we'll teach you about the basics of diabetes self-management. You'll learn about creating a diabetes care plan and what it should include. A panel of experts including a nurse, a pharmacist, a physical therapist, a dietitian, and a diabetic educator is standing by waiting to answer your questions. And always remember, you can live a long and full life with diabetes, but it's ultimately a self-managed disease and it's all up to you. So let's get started. In this section, we'll learn what diabetes is and why it occurs in some people and not others. Our first patient question is for our nurse manager. What is diabetes and why does it happen? Diabetes is a condition that causes high sugar levels in your blood. When you have diabetes, your pancreas does not make insulin or it does not make enough insulin or your body prevents the insulin you do make from working right. As a result, sugar can't get into your cells, so it stays in your blood. That's why your blood sugar gets too high. Diabetes can cause problems, but diabetes-related problems don't have to happen. Millions of people live long, full lives with diabetes. You can be one of them. Taking care of yourself and your blood sugar is the key. I feel so alone. Who's going to help me with all this? I understand your concern. You are not alone when it comes to managing your diabetes. You may have a team of healthcare professionals working with you. You may also have family members or friends for help and support. But the most important member of the team is you. As the captain of your team, you need to learn as much as you can about diabetes in general, know as much as possible about your diabetes and your health. What's in a diabetic care plan? Your diabetes care plan should include a meal plan, a physical activity plan, a plan for how often you should check your blood sugar, your personal blood sugar goals, when to take your diabetic medications, a schedule for regular checkups, and any other health goals you may have. What's going to be in my schedule? I'm glad you asked that question. Your schedule should include the following. On a daily basis, check your blood sugar as recommended by your diabetes care team. Every three months, regular office visits are very important. Your A1C test is needed to be done if blood sugar is not stable. Blood pressure checks should be done, weight checks, as well as foot checks. Then every six months, an A1C test should be done if your blood sugar is stable, and also dental exams are needed. Every year you should receive a physical exam. Also, a comprehensive foot exam is very important. Test for blood fats and cholesterol every year or more often if you're not at your goal. Kidney tests, dilated eye exams, and also a flu shot is extremely important for you as well. Why do I have to check my blood sugar? I'm glad you asked. Checking your blood sugar yourself is often the best way to be sure your diabetes is under control. It tells you the following. If your insulin or other diabetic medications are working and how your physical activity and the food you eat affect your blood sugar. So based on your care plan, you may want to test when you wake up, before meals or large snacks, one or two hours after meals or large snacks, 
before and 15 minutes after physical activity. We recommend you keep a blood diary to track your blood sugar. What should my blood sugar levels be? Your A1C should be less than 7%. Before meals, it should be 70 to 130. Two hours after meals, it should be less than 180. What's an A1C test? The A1C test measures your average blood glucose control for the past two to three months. It does not replace daily self-testing of blood glucose. Excellent questions. In this next section, we'll learn about insulin and how diabetics use it in their care plan. What about insulin? People with type 1 diabetes must take insulin to control blood sugar. People with type 2 diabetes who take insulin may find that they have more flexible eating and activity schedules. The different types of insulin are rapid acting, which controls blood sugar surges at mealtime, long acting, which controls blood sugar between meals and during sleep. Premixed combines rapid acting and intermediate acting insulin, which controls blood sugar at mealtime and all day and night. What is an insulin plan? Your plan will help you take insulin the way your body would make it if you did not have diabetes. Your plan tells you what type of insulin to take, how much insulin to take, and when to take insulin. Your plan is based on when and how much you eat, your current blood sugar level, your level of physical activity, and your lifestyle. How and where do I inject insulin? You inject insulin using an insulin pen, a syringe filled from a bottle of insulin, or an insulin pump. The locations where you inject insulin are the abdomen, thighs, or backs of the upper arms. Okay, but how do I store the insulin? To store insulin, you should follow the instructions on the insulin label, keep unopened insulin containers in the refrigerator, keep insulin out of bright light and sunlight, do not use insulin after the expiration date on the label, and it's usually okay to store insulin at room temperature once it's been opened, but check the label to make sure. And don't let insulin become too hot or cold. I see, but how do I get rid of the used diabetes supplies? You should use needles and syringes only once, then throw them away in a safe container. Find out if your state has laws about how to dispose of used diabetes supplies. Unless your state says otherwise, Get a shop's container at your local pharmacy. Ask your diabetes team how to get rid of the container after it's full. Our next section covers the importance of exercise and how to start an activities or exercise program. How do I start an activity program? That's an excellent question. First, talk with your doctor before you start any exercise activities. Then choose your activity, whatever is comfortable for you, perhaps walking or jogging, bicycling, swimming, or even dancing. Then set a goal for yourself. Your goal should be at least 30 minutes of activity at least five days a week. Proper activity is so important for people with diabetes. Next, we'll tackle how to prepare a healthy diabetes meal plan. How do I plan healthy meals? For teenagers and adults, a day's worth of healthy meals includes at least two to three servings of non-starchy vegetables, two servings of fruits, six servings of grains, beans, or starchy vegetables, two servings of low-fat or fat-free milk, and about six ounces of meat or meat substitutes. Eating a healthy diet can help you control your blood sugars and blood fats, help you maintain a healthy weight or lose weight if you're overweight, and allow you to take less medications or avoid taking medications for your diabetes. What about carbohydrates and why are they important? Good question. Carbs raise blood sugar more than other nutrients and are found in a lot of foods. Carb counting can help you manage your blood sugar, be flexible in your choice of foods and meal times, and eat more foods that you enjoy. The only foods that generally do not contain carbs are meats and meat substitutes such as eggs and cheese, and fats and oils. 
Look at food labels to see how many carbs are in your favorite foods. Remember to choose your carbs wisely. How do I use exchange lists for meal planning? Each list has foods that have about the same amount of carbs, calories, protein, and fat. The lists come in these groups. Starch, fruits, milk, sweets, desserts, and other carbohydrates, non-starchy vegetables, meat and meat substitutes, and fats. It's important to eat not only the right types of foods, but also the right amounts. Weigh and measure your foods when you first start carb counting and once in a while after that. Use your hand to estimate portion sizes. Your fist is about one cup. Your palm is about three ounces. Your thumb is about two tablespoons or one ounce. Your thumb tip is about one teaspoon. And a handful is about two ounces or a quarter cup of a snack food. Now let's learn how to handle low blood sugar and understand the potential long-term health issues for diabetics. My first question for you is, how do I manage low blood sugar? First, recognize the symptoms. Weakness, tiredness, hunger, dizziness or shakiness, nervousness, sweating, fast heartbeat, or blurry vision. If you are experiencing any of these symptoms, eat or drink something high in sugar right away, such as four ounces of regular fruit juice or soda pop, three to four glucose tablets, or three to five hard candies that you can chew quickly. If your blood sugar is too high, you may feel very thirsty or hungry, need to pass urine more than usual, feel like your mouth and skin are dry, have blurry vision, or feel sleepy. You can manage high blood sugar by checking your blood sugar, following your meal plan, doing your prescribed exercises, and taking your medicine as prescribed. What else should I do? Make sure you know when and how to take your insulin or diabetes medicine. When and how to check your blood sugar and what the numbers mean. And how to call your diabetes care team. Know your target blood sugar goals before meals, after meals, and your A1C. Make sure you know what you can do if your blood sugars are out of range. Make sure you know how to follow your meal and exercise plans. Great, thank you. But what about long-term health problems? Over time, high blood sugars can cause problems with your heart and blood vessels, your kidneys, teeth, gums, feet, eyes, nerves, or your skin. To help prevent these problems, keep your blood sugar as close to normal as possible. That means following your diabetes care plan. Hello again. I hope that you enjoyed watching this short educational film about diabetes. We hope that you now understand what diabetes is and how it can be controlled. Most importantly, I want to remind you that the care and treatment of people with diabetes should be individualized. We are all unique and different. With the help of your doctors, nurses, pharmacists, dietitians, and other members of your healthcare team, you should be able to create your own diabetes care plan. And now you know what it should include. It's important to stay in good control. Mark Twain once wrote that good judgment comes from experience and experience comes from bad judgment. Diabetes is a disease that requires your lifelong commitment. So enjoy the journey and keep on learning. South Nassau Communities Hospital and the Diabetes and Endocrine Disease Management Committee would like to gratefully acknowledge the Slomo and Cindy Sylvian Foundation whose generous grant provided the funding for the production of this video.